<laughs> and for those who don't know, that's Marina, the baby. And this is Lana and I'm Roxanne. Callie Call, would you go see uh, your best friend's mom in the bar, please? Do we have any other announcements? Okay. Our brothers are here, Jeff and Dubby, here somewhere. And I'm nervous. I have performance anxiety. I never make it in a band. <laughs> but on behalf of Daryl's family, Debbie is here, Luke and Louise, Holly, Keenan, Jordan, and we'd all like to welcome you today. And we're so thankful that you're all here. And to celebrate, awesome Daryl Allen. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone who hasn't signed the guest book, don't forget to sign the guest book before you leave. There's a place in there that you can leave a note for the family or maybe a short memory. I think they'd like to go back and read it after today. And I know sometimes you forget to sign it, maybe on your way out. So I'm grateful to my sister Marina, who put this whole thing together. And Mallory, your daughter. Stand up, Mallory. Stand up, Mallory. Take a bow. Take a bow. Yay. She designed the cups, ordered the cups. She designed the handouts, printed them out. And last night, her and Ruthie did all the uh, centerpieces for the tables. <laughs> and they did a fabulous job. Thank you, girls. We would also like to thank Dubby, our shipbuilder. Stand up, Dubby! <laughs> and to anyone else who helped that I, I may have missed, this has really been a group effort, and it turned out so nice. And we'd also like to thank, of course, Mike, Matt, yeah, you helped. You, you get me plugging you, Nick. <laughs> We really would like to give a big thank you to the American Legion, Post 578, for allowing us to use the hall today and for performing the military ceremonies. We're, we're so excited. And a few things have changed because of the wind outside. The flag folding was going to be outside, but it's all going to be inside. They will have the 21 gun salute out this door right here, you can hear it. And if you wanna see it, you can walk out these doors. <laughs> Sorry, that's my, my dog. <laughs> thank you, buddy. A big, big thank you to Randy for setting this all up. Gina, Zeb, Miles, and Brendan will all be here singing for us later. It's gonna make it such a party. Daryl will be proud. And now I'd like to announce that Daryl's daughter-in-law, Louise, is going to come up and give the eulogy. And after that, the commander will come up and they'll start the American Legion part of it. And from that, we go into the blacksmith send-off. If you see the anvil over here, those things were gonna be outdoors, but we're having them indoors instead. But we can't burn a boat in here. So we will go outdoors, and whoever wants to watch Luke shoot an arrow, a flaming arrow, stand behind him, <laughs> then that will happen after the uh, blacksmith send-off. Did I forget anything? Uh, don't forget to tip your bartenders in the... <laughs> yes, my childhood friend, Gina. Yay! Give her a lot of money. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> yes, lunch is at is two o'clock. So yeah, af after you know all these ceremonies and everything, the caterers will probably be here to start setting up dinner. It will be served. So if you're all hungry and can't wait till two o'clock, we have potato chips <laughs> and candy. <laughs> okay, let's hand it over to Louise.
I'm getting comfortable. It's hard enough to say goodbye to Daryl. Oh. Okay, thank you. Okay. Daryl Allen never met a stranger. And I'm gonna give you an example of what I mean by that. One time we were sitting on my front porch and somebody pulled up in the driveway with a lawnmower in the back of their truck. They hopped out and asked, did you call me about my mower? And Daryl said, no, but I'll have a look. And he ran out to the truck and he talked to him for nearly 30 minutes. And you know, he didn't buy the lawnmower, but by the time that was over, he had a friend for a little amount of time. And Daryl was like that. He was quick to befriend everyone he met. He was eager to help out and he loved to talk. That's how he let, let us know that he loved us by cracking a joke, lending a hand, smiling his unforgettable, mischievous grin, recommending a good TV show or an interesting song, sharing the experience that we call life. And Daryl was full of it. Life, that is. <laughs> <laughs> he was an artist, blacksmith, horseshoe pitcher, veteran, comedic conversationalist, and all around outstanding human being. Whether you called him Sam Straight Arrow, Duke, Uncle Daryl, Dad, Brother, or Other Brother Daryl, if you knew him, even for a small moment, he called you a friend. He was born in Alton on September 16, 1948, to Dub and Jean Allen, who lived right here in Bunker Hill. And Daryl almost didn't make it into the world. While he was still in Jean's belly, he was buried under the rubble of his home in the 1948 Bunker Hill tornado, which claimed the life of his only older sibling, baby Jackie. Thankfully, Jean and Daryl were rescued, and he went on to live a wonderful life full of laughter and love with his siblings who followed. Daryl has three loving sisters, Roxanne Parker, Lana Call, and Marina Allen, and two caring brothers, Jeffrey Allen and Dubby Allen. Daryl's life could be a movie, a good one that I'd pay to see. I regret not sitting down with him and really getting the inside scoop on all he had lived. I thought I had more time. I'm thankful for all we do know, and because Daryl liked to tell stories, we know a lot. He graduated from Bunker Hill High School and was drafted into the Vietnam War on January 16, 1969, at 20 years old, only one year older than his grandsons, Jordan and Keenan, are now. Daryl became a member of the 101 Airborne Division Screaming Eagles. During the last day of the Battle of Hamburger Hill on May 20th, 1969, he was shot in the neck during combat. He was three quarters of the way up the hill before he was wounded. He told me he woke up in a medic tent and thought he was still on the battlefield before they presented him with a nurse to prove that he was getting medical attention. I bet it was chaos that day and Daryl survived it. His war buddy, Ed Henry, actually created the famous Hamburger Hill sign you can Google it and see the sign and a photo of Ed, who lost his legs during the next battle. He and Daryl became lifelong friends. They loved their phone calls and visits. Daryl was awarded the Bronze Star Medal, Purple Heart, National Service Medal, Vietnam Campaign Medal, Vietnam Service Medal, and the Combat Infantry, Infantry Man Badge for his service during the war. But he was candid, at least with me, about his disdain of war in general and the atrocities of his experiences. He was proud to serve his country, but one of his favorite books was Johnny Got His Gun. It's a heartbreaking tale of the personal cost of war, and I recommend reading it as Daryl recommended it to me. Despite his time in Vietnam, I knew Daryl to be a happy and grateful person. I think this speaks to his friendly disposition and his big heart. Daryl married our beloved Debbie White on June 29th, 1973, right here in Bunker Hill. The couple welcomed Luke into their lives on May 17th, 1976, and Holly on June 5th, 1979. The family moved from Bunker Hill to Plainview, where Daryl and Debbie lived together for more than 40 years. During this time, Daryl worked as a pipe builder, fitter, welder, 
and member of the fire brigade of the Clark Oil Refinery. He was a hard worker who helped build a loving home for his family. He went on to work at Alton Steel as a maintenance man before retiring in 2010. A member of the Illinois Valley Blacksmith Association, Daryl was a regular every Wednesday in the blacksmith shop at the Macoupin County Historical Society, where he taught many friends and family members the tricks of the trade, forging not only tools and works of art, but also many friendships. He taught a popular rose making workshop and spread his love of blacksmithing enthusiastically. He was a skilled blacksmith and an imaginative artist. He had a giant railroad spike sculpture installed in Springfield, Missouri at the Fresco train line, and his metal sculpture, Functional Relativity, was featured in a juried art um, exhibit in the early 1990s at the St. Louis Artist Guild. He also created a Millennium Torch, thing was huge, and spit out fire. It was a sculpture that was used during first night at Lewis and Clark Community College during New Year's Eve in 1999. Daryl had and loved creativity. He enjoyed painting and drawing as well, and we cherish the artwork he has left behind. An award-winning horseshoe pitcher, Daryl was a member of the Illinois State Horseshoe Pitching Association. He, com he competed locally and at the state and national levels. He brought home multiple first and second place trophies for single and double competitions. I have several photos of him smiling ear to ear holding his plaques. He loved playing horseshoes with his children and his grandsons and his friends. Daryl enjoyed coffee, race cars, and music. He loved animals. He also loved collecting free things off the side of the road. And his son Luke currently carries on that tradition to this day. <laughs> the, next time, <laughs> uh, the next time you see something with a free sign on it, and if you can use it, maybe stop and get it. This would be a great way to honor Daryl and his legacy. And men like Daryl, who have made so many friends and strive to live life to the fullest, they always leave us with legacies. Daryl's is one of joy, camaraderie, and humanness. He embraced the world, and the lucky ones loved him right back. He left behind numerous nieces and nephews and a ton of neighbors and friends. He loved us all dearly. And even though he rarely ever said the words, I loved you, I love you, he lived in a way that made this fact clear. He loved us all. He'd help whenever he could, whether he needed a smile or a leak fixed, or maybe even talked out of doing something stupid, which he did to me a couple times. I'm thankful for that. I really miss talking to Daryl. He made me laugh. He made me think. I always enjoyed our phone calls and visits. He had an interesting perspective. He was compassionate and intelligent. He had experienced so much. He loved to talk about current events, global ones and local ones too. He'd fill me in with all the latest family, we'll call it news uh, and milestones. And he kept us all connected that way. He celebrated our wins and he helped us during our struggles. Losing Daryl was totally unfair, like life often is. Daryl didn't deserve to die the way he did from a horrifying hit and run accident. No one does really. And it makes me mad and sad when I think about it. And my heart is still both broken from it. I know Daryl would want us to celebrate and smile at his amazing life instead of dwell on the brief moment of his tragic death. There are so many more interesting and noteworthy things about him. And the love I have for him helps me heal from the loss of him. But losing Daryl in this way too soon for me, too soon for all of us, is something that will always make my heart ache. It is a great loss. He was a charismatic social butterfly who created beautiful metal butterflies. I honestly found him to be marvelous and intriguing. I love him like a father. And like Daryl, I also love a great party. And he made them all better with his conversations and his jokes. I will never forget his laugh or his smile or his willingness to be genuine, thoughtful, and kind with absolutely anybody. I encourage you to spread kindness and make friends like he did. That's part of Daryl's legacy too, another great way to honor him. To say that Daryl lived an extraordinary life may be an understatement, but I know the unique path that he took was due in part to his adventurous and generous nature. He loved people and we loved him back. 
I know I will never meet another one like him, and I'll always miss his presence, humor, and guidance. Daryl's legacy will surely live as long as those of us who remember him, and there are so many of us that do. I find comfort in that, in the family and friends gathered here today, in the life that Daryl lived, and in the relationships he built with all of us who remain connected because of him. Thank you for joining us to celebrate Daryl and honor his legacy. Daryl would have loved seeing you all here, and he'd want us to throw a great party, tell lots of stories about him, laugh, and have fun.